Well, as far as I'm concerned, Andy, um, and by the way, apologies that we've been missing these past... Not my fault. Two weeks. <laughs> two weeks. I was here. The truth is we forgot one, and we actually weren't here on the no. second. But anyway, here we are. We're back, and it's a regular feature. Um, Sunday nights, when we can, if it has to hold till Monday morning, then so be it. But um, for me, only one major game to talk about this week, Andy, Manchester Derby. Um, conclusions at the end of it would be what? For the first time, probably, I think. We saw a, a, a big Manchester Derby played between two teams who were struggling with belief, struggling with confidence. Mm. I didn't think I'd ever say that when you look at the quality of footballer there, but United are obviously coming into the game still short of confidence, haven't went away from home yet in the Premier League, which is astonishing as we go into November. And Manchester City on the back of two defeats and a draw in the last three games are obviously were obviously a little bit nervous and I think that's the way they started. I don't think United took advantage of that. They were okay to start with for 20 minutes United. But I thought once City got to grips with the game and started to ask a few questions, um, United were then playing a holding game more than anything. And even 11 v 11, I thought that um, City were the better side. Uh, they had the most threat, they had more of a threat than, than United who were pretty ordinary at that point in the game. But of course the Chris Smalling moment, the moment of madness, two moments of madness in many ways, um, really really did cost Manchester United. Yes, and it's something that Van Gaal was, um, was I think very disappointed about. Bearing in mind he had said let's keep our heads, yeah. the derby atmosphere can, can, can lead to cards uh, being brandished. But, 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 but what also surprised me a little was the way City were hanging on. What happened? 11 against 10, mm -hmm. you're leading, you're at home, and yet you're looking really anxious about getting over the line. Why? Well, even great players and very good players get nervous. And that's why I said to you that they, they needed to win the football match. They couldn't allow Chelsea to get any further ahead of them. So every game they play is a pressure game. Now, when you're playing a pressure game and you're not playing well, your confidence is low. Well, not at its best, let's say. Not low, but not at its best. And you've not got David Silva, and Yaya Touré hasn't been at his best. You want to win the football match, you just win it. And when we were doing the game, I said to you during the second half, they're backing off. And what I mean <coughs> by that is, bless you. Excuse me. And what I mean by that is that instead of controlling the football and pushing United back, when the second goal didn't come, United's got nothing to lose. So they take a little gamble. City then go, wow, we're under a little bit of pressure. So they back off the game and they back to the edge of their box and they invite the pressure on because they think that their extra man in defence will count. And it just puts you under a little bit of pressure. Now, there were a couple of dramas. You know, obviously Van Persie had a half a chance from a tight angle and obviously Fellaini had a great chance uh, with a header that he would normally have scored from. But that apart, I thought, you know, Van Gaal today has mentioned spirit. We showed great spirit. Well, my goodness, if you assemble a squad for, or a team for £250 million, pounds, the least you can get from them is spirit, mm. especially if you're playing for an iconic club like Manchester United. So that's the least the players could have delivered. I just thought, again, that they're, you know, they were just a little short. I, I wasn't quite sure how they were playing. They, they had a midfield at 11v11 where they played Wayne Rooney and alongside Fellaini and Daley Blind. And I'm not sure how that's going to work. I'm not sure if it is going to work. And it was a pity they didn't stay 11v11 because we'd have got a better idea in the game. But everyone tells me that they're progressing. But I've heard some Manchester United fans a little unrestful because well, of the, the start. The facts, Andy, say they're not. It's their worst start for 28 mm. years since that run that saw Big Ron sacked yeah. and actually Fergie arrive at Old Trafford. They haven't won away from home this time last year. They had the best away record in the Premier League. Surely there has to be concerns, and at some point, somebody other than, well, me, <laughs> is going to start asking a few questions about what's happening at Old Trafford. Louis van Gaal's getting a bit of latitude because he's Louis van Gaal, and that's one reason. He's he's getting away with it as well because of the injury problems that they have. I think a lot of it may be self-inflicted. David Moyes got terrible stick last year for allegedly training the boys in the wrong way and losing a couple, a couple pre-season. Van Gaal's lost five or six. Uh, now, is that anything to do with training? I don't know. It suggests it might be because not a lot of these injuries are happening in mm. actual games. Mm. You know, they're getting to Thursdays and they're losing so and so and they're losing Ra this one. Raphael this week. This week, yeah. Phil Jones the weeks before and Johnny Evans the weeks before and Ander Herrera the week before that. So they're losing too many players, but I think he's, because he hasn't got that full squad available, 
a lot of United fans are saying, OK, well, we'll be OK once we get everybody fit. Now, we wait and see if that's the case. But by then, United may be a good way away, and certainly in the title race, they'll be miles away. Well, no chance. The title, are they? No chance. Let's and I know, there are no chance, I don't think, of getting in the top two. They might squeak the top four. They might, if they can go on a, a decent run and get, get some of the players back. But at the moment, I, I, I see a collection of good attacking talent, not quite a team, and a defence that, that is suspect, and just as well as a very, very good goalkeeper behind it. We will be back. Now, oh, final word, right. uh, just before we close. Villa, six straight defeats. Are you concerned? <sighs> uh, yeah, of course I'm concerned. I, 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 Paul Lambert again saying, you know, today and yesterday that, that we were the best team, we played well. It's just I've seen so many teams get relegated with their coaches of those teams saying, well, we've played well this week and they get another Absolutely. defeat. We've yeah. played well this week and we're not the worst team in the league. Yeah, I know that. I've seen that. They've lost Benteke again for three games. That's going to affect them. They don't look like they can get a goal at all. They got one from Byman. He was the only player on the pitch wearing a Villa strip for an hour, for more than an hour, that had scored the league goal this season. It's, it's traumatic, troubled times for me. But... Again, Paul's got away with it because of the, the games that they've played. But they've played QPR and they've played a poor Spurs team and they've had nothing. They go to West Ham, Southampton and I think the other one might be Crystal Palace. Now, at the end of that little spell, including the two games they've just played, if it's not any better for Villa, then I think Paul will, will need to start answering some questions. I think he's getting away with it now because of the fixtures they've had. But he has to get something going. It's, it's shocking. Shocking. I'm just looking in that water behind you. Big, uh, big decision now. A glass of champagne, uh, golf, or should we get some sun? All three, I think. See you next week. <laughs>